What's going on, everybody? This is Joe. And Amy. And we are here practicing good social distancing as we have been doing. We are feeling fine, and we hope all of you out there are continuing to be safe and happy and healthy as best as possible during this interesting time for all of us. But we are here to have some fun. This event is Phantom. Cards in your sealed pool are not added to your collection, just an FYI. But it says, want to play some limited that really packs a punch? The cube sealed experience grants you six packs like a typical sealed event, only the card pool isn't bound to a single magic set. Instead, they are drawn from the creme de la creme of all of the cards available in MTG Arena. Cube has no concept of rarity, so you'll have plenty of exciting rares and mythics in your pool. The diversity of cards and the strategies and synergies make each run an exciting new experience every time. You can see a list of all the cards by clicking there, but it's also online, and I'm sure that's where it will take you if you click that spot. But yeah, Amy, what do you what do you think about Cube? I don't know much about it. We you and I played in a Cube team draft once, but it was completely casual. It was at a local game store, uh, and we just did it and had some fun. Um, we're gonna still try to have some fun here. There's no reason to try to be super spiky and competitive. We're just trying to figure things out and have a good time. <laughs> Is that fair? Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to start, but I have no idea what I'm going to be doing, so I guess we'll find out. You got it. So, strap in, everybody, because we're going to get started with our pool. Okay. Well, we've got some good <laughs> we've got some good white cards, that's for sure. Uh, okay, I don't exactly know the best way to, to do this. This seems fine. Can you scroll this way? Yeah, okay. So, how do you want to start looking at this, or do you want some suggestions from me? Uh, I have no idea how to start looking at this. Okay, so if you look here, it's split up by color. Right. Right, so obviously we start with the white, then the blue. Uh, we do not have a lot of blue, it looks like. Like, if you look at our white, right, we've got 7, 14, 19. We got 19 white cards, and then 10 blue cards. Wow. <laughs> so. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> and 12 black cards. Mono blue. Mono white, you mean. Oh, mono blue because we have no <laughs> blue cards? That's fair. You um, just play a 10-card yeah. <laughs> deck. Don't um, even put any lands in. It's fine. <laughs> just, just 10 cards. Yeah. Uh, we we can, nice, thankfully, make a 40-card deck. Apparently, they just gave us this Mind Stone art as our box art. That seems for cool. For some reason. I can't see it very well, but yeah, it seems well, I'm, cool. I assume we have the card, which is why they gave it to us, but maybe I not. I assume. Um, wow, we do not have a lot of red either. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine red cards and a red land. That's the least yet, unless we just had like a million white cards. We have Castle Garenberg as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, we have two. Okay, so we just have a million white cards, which is good because we have a white black corpse knight and a white black Ariel knight of wind grace as well. So it looks okay. like maybe we go white black. There's okay. also a burning tree emissary, mm. a Domri. Okay. There is a response resurgence, a sacred foundry. So if we want to go Boros, we have the dual. We have the dual land for Boros, and we have the uh, split card, as well as Aurelia. Aurelia is an incredible card. So if we want to go red-white, we could do that with these three. Plus, we also have Clifftop Retreat, which is pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, but we don't have, like, any red cards. <laughs> yeah, but we have a million white cards. Like, if we're looking at white-black up here or white-red down here, like, that seems incredible for okay. us. Um, plus, if we're going red... Uh, we can play Sahili because she's hybrid blue-red, so we would just play her as double red. Mm. Uh, same with Expansion, at least, if we really wanted it. Obviously, we wouldn't be able to play Explosion, but we could play Expansion. I don't think the card's that good, but it is an option for us, technically. Um, I mean, I think lots of things are options, technically, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that it, it's necessarily what we want to do. Yeah, we've got Risk the Redeemed as well if we're going white. It's one white mana to play this 1-1, one, one. but then for two and a white tap, create a 1-1 one, one green and white elf warrior, as you see over here on the right, or for six, four white, white, 
tap for each creature token you control, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Mm -hmm. So if we have other token makers, that would probably be good. Without it, this card's probably not amazing on its own. I love that token, though. Yeah, really, cool really cool. Art. I mean, the wrist art is pretty cool, too, I would say. <clears throat> uh, Roalesque is awesome. Put two plus one plus one counters on another creature you control, and then when he dies, proliferate, and then proliferate again. Oh. And then there's the Hydroid Crisis, which is absolutely incredible. X green blue for a zero zero or a star star. Whenever you cast it, you gain half X life and draw half X cards round down each time. And it enters with X plus one plus one counters on it. And it has flying and trample. Yeah, this is a bit overwhelming. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's, first of all, there's the Mind Stone. You wanted to look at that. You said it looked cool. Yeah, it does look cool. Uh... Depending on our deck, I think Platinum Angel just goes in no matter what because it is a 7-mana 4-4 four, four flying that says you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Oh, I would say so. <laughs> um, lands we control have tap add 1 mana of any color, and then we can tap this to add 1 mana of any color. There's some nice fixing. It's not a ton. We've got Evolving Wilds to get some stuff. We've got the Lantern. We've got Golden Egg, which can let us add 1 mana of any color. Um, but that's only once, so that's not amazing. Uh, and then Blast Zone, no. Blast Zone's probably just a no. Um, interesting. There's also two Planeswalker Ashiok's right here. Ooh. Ashiok Dream Render and Ashiok Nightmare Muse. Um, unfortunately, like with this Ashiok, we could be going blue or black and still play it. But with this Ashiok, we would need blue and black. Yeah. Um... We have, like, no blue cards at all. Or black. I mean, we're low on both, really. Mm. Um, hmm. This is really tough. I think we kind of... Hold on. Let me... Let's look at some of our green. Our green seems really good. Um, green is always good. Yeah, well. Between the Great Henge... Costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. Wow, I love that art. <laughs> it's gorgeous. I, I want that art to hang on my wall. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you can tap it to add two green, and you gain two life. And then whenever a non-token creature enters under your control, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and you draw a card. Jesus. For seven mana, there's the Nyx Bloom Ancient, which is a 5-5 five, five trample for seven but it says if you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana instead. Jeez, what the... F well, this is cube. <laughs> yep. So I'm going to be saying that about everything, I guess. Yep, we've got the finale of Devastation. X green green for sorcery. Search your library and graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. If X is 10 or more, all of your creatures get plus X plus X and haste until end of turn. Okay. Um, <sighs> there's Questing Beast, 4-4, four, four, Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste for 4. Okay. <laughs> it can't be blocked and by... And Trample. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what else to say. Uh, flying. Yeah. Uh, creatures with power 2 or less can't block it. Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures we control can't be prevented. And whenever it deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. Oh, <laughs> okay. I don't know. So our green... How are you supposed to decide what you're picking? Well, that's that's why <laughs> sealed is very weird for this. Usually you draft this so that you have a better idea of what you're going for as opposed to just this. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, in fact, if we're looking at just our white, like, this card's great, this card's great, this card's great, seal away is great... History of Benalia is great. Resplendent Angel is amazing. Archon's great. Uh, Settle the Wreckage is amazing. Uh, Conclave Tribunal, when it enters, exile target non-land permanent until this leaves the battlefield and it's got Convoke. Sure, why not? It's got Seb McKinnon. <laughs> God Eternal Oketra. Oketra. I'm all about Oketra. Uh, Lyra Dawnbringer. Flying First Strike Lifelink. Other angels you control get plus one, plus one, and have Lifelink. Okay. Uh, and we already have a Resplendent Angel. Plus Lyra. Plus... Uh, where'd she go? Aurelia's an angel. Nice. 
And is that la is that thing an angel? Platinum, Platinum angel? angel's an angel. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we do angel tribal. <laughs> How does that sound okay. for everybody? <laughs> uh, do we play Riss? I don't think so. We don't. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. Uh, and Riss says, for each creature token you control, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> so we play Riss. Uh, we could play Burning Tree, but it adds a red and a green when it comes in. I don't know that that's really necessary. Um, we still need a couple more cards, but not a ton, to be honest with you. Uh, let's go... To, what is Sahili? Oh, Sahili makes servos, so that's tokens. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you make a servo. Target artifact you control becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. We only have Platinum Angel as an artifact, and obviously the, um, the servos that she makes. We'll come back to that. Um, let's look... Continue to look at our white... We do have this. White left? Oh, yeah. We do it. Oh, God, yeah. Look, we've got Finale of Glory. Oh, God. This makes soldiers and or angels. Wow. Uh, the angels, though, X would need to be 10 or more. Um, oh. Because Finale of Glory is X white white for a sorcery. Create X 2 2 white soldier creature tokens with vigilance. If X is 10 or more, also create X. 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance. Whoa. Card's insane, but you need a million mana, so there's almost yeah. no chance you're going to get it. But we can still make soldiers and then duplicate them with wrists, so there's that. Yeah. Um, we can take God's Willing for one white instant target creature we control gains protection from the color of our choice until end of turn, so we can stop it from dying to removal yeah, or something. maybe. Or from damage. Same thing with this. Uh, as Dauntless enters, uh, Dauntless Bodyguard enters the battlefield, choose another creature you control, and then we can sack it, and the chosen creature will gain indestructible until end of turn. Okay. Um, each player controls a creature with power four or greater, draws a card, then destroy all creatures. Eh. We've also got destroy all non-giant creatures, and it's a 7-7 seven, seven vigilance. We could maybe put that in. I, I would like to look at our reds. We haven't looked at our red at all yet. Okay. Uh, we do have Resplendent Phoenix. That's or Rekindling cool. Phoenix, excuse me. Um, which is, when it dies, you make this 01 Elemental, which is on the left here. Which, by the way, can be duplicated by Riss. Nice. And if it gets duplicated, it says, The beginning of your upkeep, sack this creature, and return target card named Rekindling Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. Now, obviously... Both of these elementals won't work. Like, you know, it, uh, but we could still have a second O1 that could just block randomly. Um, we have a 4-4 four, four dragon. We do. We have Varric's Blade Bladewing, which makes a 4-4 four, four flying dragon token if we kick it. So we'd have to pay seven for it. But still, that can be duplicated. Wow. Uh, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control six or more lands... You create a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying, Whoa. and that can be duplicated with Riss. Look at that. You like dragon. The, the dragon He's art? It's like bad <laughs> It's really cool. Looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. So yeah, it seems like we'll do that. What is the Perforos intervention? Oh, it creates tokens. Oh. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, and it's X and a red to create an X1 red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste. You do sack it at the beginning of the next end step, which means you're probably not going to be duplicating this because you need like a million mana. But still, you could also deal twice X damage to target creature or planeswalker with Perforos' intervention. So we're going to put that in as well. We need two more cards. Do we put the banneret in? Actually, we need probably... Oh no, I guess it counts the lands here. So... Um, Maybe some it doesn't. Or some fixing. No, it does. Oh, yeah, it does. It counts it. No, because we have 17. What did you say? I said some green or some fixing or something. Why do we need green? Because we have the right thing. Riss. No, Riss is green or white. Oh, okay. So and then we don't green, need green or white for its. Correct. Okay. Correct. Well, you were saying you liked the green, though. Uh, I think our green is pretty good, but I so think I our. I thought we were going three color there. Yeah, but I think our red and white is a lot better. Okay. Um. Interesting. Okay, so I mean, we gotta put this in, right? Like, there's no chance we don't put that in. Um, what does this do? Plus one, plus oh, no. Plus two, plus oh, and it's got Mentor. 
uh, I guess this is destroyed target artifact, and this is uh, cube, so we might actually need that. Mm, what that's else? A good point. What other white cards do we have? Not not much. We've got this, but I I think we're going to be the really creature deck. That. No, we're going to be the creature deck here. All right, so let's take this. Okay, that's forty cards. I mean, okay. I think our black was okay. Like we have Lily, which is great. Uh, we have the Nightmare Shepherd, which is incredible. The card's great. That's awesome art. Too. Yes. Look how badass that looks. Yep. And we have Rotting Regisar, which is incredible. It's a three mana seven six. <laughs> <laughs> um, our blue is actually not, not that great. I won't lie. Um. So yeah, I mean, our our black is fine. We have like Cast Down and Murderous Rider, Inevitable End. So we have some cool removal. Um, but I think green is our next best color after white. Uh, and then our red is pretty okay, especially combined with what our white is doing. Um, I don't think we need this. What I don't does think... that one do again? What's that? What does that one do again? This, uh, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2, and when it enters, you can add 2. So oh. basically, you're playing it and then getting the mana back that you spent to play it. Oh. So you're essentially making a 2-2 two, two for free. Okay. Um, this adds red or green. This adds black or red, but it enters tapped. And this enters tapped unless we control a mountain or a forest. It's better to just have a mountain in that instance. Uh, Chromatic Lantern's not necessary, and this allows us to draw a card at some point in the future, but that's not as important. So, uh, this is Godless Shrine, that's not necessary either. We don't want expansion, cop copy target instant or sorcery, with convert mana cost four or less, and you can choose new targets. And I don't think we need Sahili either, because we do not have uh, artifacts besides the Platinum Angel, and I am not turning the Platinum Angel into something that's not this Platinum Angel. Right. <laughs> Because we want this Platinum Angel very badly. Uh, I think that's it then. Okay. Right? I mean, this seems okay to me. I don't know about you. It seems pretty good to me. Now, Amy, my question to you is, we're not using the Mind Stone, so what do you want our deck box art to be? That's the real question. Riss. Riss? Yeah, just because he's a green card and we're not actually <laughs> playing green. <laughs> All right. Uh, so usually when we do drafts, at least we do this and then we, um, we, you know, go to the next video and we'll tell you, we'll see you next week, but we can play our first game. Okay. This is, I assume best of one, although I don't think it says it anywhere. Yeah. I didn't remember you mentioning that at all. So interesting. All right. I well, let's we'll find out. Find out. Yeah. I assume it is because it's arena and arena is made as best of one. So that's my guess. We'll see. This is uh, this is our first cube event. We're not, you know, we're definitely not sharks, as you can tell from um, how we had to look through all those cards. So we're going to do our best. That's all that we can ask for. Read Ja 1127, and it's Varaska. Yeah. Well, we have two red, a single white mana, two, one and a white, one white white, two white white, and two red red. Mm -hmm. So... Oh, yeah. Well, this is better. Yeah, this is better. I, I think we have to put Oketra on the bottom, though. No. Either that or we put Perforous' Intervention on the bottom. Oh, that's one of the ones that can't be duplicated, right? What do you mean? This is... This yeah, is yeah, yeah. We can't copy. Correct. Because it dies at the end of the turn, and you have to pay a bunch of mana to get it in the first place. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we can put that one on the bottom. The Intervention? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, the problem is... This is Welcome to Cube. We are going to pay two life to put this land on the field. And then we're going to play a Legion's Landing. But now we get a Vampire creature token with lifelink. And then this says whenever when you attack with three or more creatures, we transform Legion's Landing. We drew another land. That's nice. Um, oh, and this has lifelink. And whenever you gain life, you put a plus one, plus one counter on a Johnny's Pride Mate. They don't have something to stop us from attacking here because this is going to get out of hand very quickly for us. <laughs> Yay, 3-3. Three, three. Okay. <laughs> Dragon Master Outcast is great. We're excited because we haven't seen any cards that they have yet. They have Once Upon a Time. Oh, okay. They played it for free. Oh, you, they look at the top five cards of their library. They can reveal a creature or land from among them and put it into their hand. And the rest go on the bottom of their library in a random order. 
It's the first spell they cast this game so they can cast it without paying its mana cost. This card is banned in a lot of formats. Yeah. Cube is not one of them. <laughs> they picked a land and then played a 2-1 Hexproof. Uh, okay. Uh, we're going to play this Clifftop Retreat. And then we're going to attack with our Johnny's Pride Mate. This has Hexproof as long as it's untapped. And they can use it to add one mana of any color. I think we risk attacking here with both creatures. Because I don't think they trade here. So they're going to take four. And then our Pride Mate becomes a 4-4? Four, four? Our Pride Mate becomes a 4-4 four, four either way. Oh, they did block. They thought about that for a while, too. That's fine with me. It's a 4-4. Four, four. We'll play this Dragon Master Outcast. We need one land over the next two turns, and we have Oketra. Nice. <laughs> that sounds gorgeous. It's, it's unfair, is what it is. <laughs> I won't lie. Yeah, we drew a land. That's great. Okay, no more lands, please, after this. But uh, let's go to combat and attack with just the Pride Mate. Okay, they take the four. We have a fourth land. Next turn, we have a 3-6 double strike. Sounds good to me. <laughs> it seems okay. <laughs> they have six mana, and this lets they just them... just play two lands in a turn? You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Oh, they have oh. Thalia and Aria, Knight of Windgrace. I love Thalia. Ooh, we have the Archon. Ooh. Okay. Well, let's play this land. So, okay, so Ariel, Knight of Windgrace is a 4-4 Vigilance. They can tap three, tap it, and make a knight, a 2-2 two -two knight with vigilance. Or they can tap a black, tap it, and tap X untapped knights they control to destroy target creature with power X or less. So they could kill our outcast eventually. They also, they would need a bunch more knights. What does Thalia do again? Non-creature spells cost one more to cast. Thankfully, we only have creature spells in our hand. So let's play this Oketra. <laughs> uh, no attacks, thank you. The Archon comes out next turn, and we get a 4-4 out of the deal just for playing it, as long as she lives. But even if she dies, or is put into exile from the battlefield, we can put it into our library, third from the top. Nice. Yeah. This card's a little busted. <laughs> <laughs> this was the... Uh, Again, it's cubes, so well, we're probably going to say that. But God Eternal Oketra was the card where if you opened this card in limited... When it hit the field, you like your opponent you almost always conceded yeah. because you just win. Hey, look, we drew a land. Uh, I'll hold that. Let's do this. Yep, we get a 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> and then we get a 3-4. <laughs> this is mean. I love how all the like leaves <laughs> fell Yeah. at that moment. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Oketra will not have... Yeah, I think I attack with at least Oketra here. Because if they really feel like double blocking, I'm okay with that. <sighs> Otherwise they go to nine. They make a knight, which blocks, I assume. I guess that's why they made it. Or... <sighs> okay. Still took six. So actually, I lied. They don't go to nine. They go to six. Uh, and then we'll end our turn. It looks like they have four blockers. We have five attackers. So like this gets through. Oh, no. This is a flyer. So this gets through. Um, okay, so they can destroy our one one. That's fine. Uh, we would have had a sixth land, but it says at the beginning of your upkeep. Okay. So we would have had to wait anyway. We lost out, but that's fine. Okay, so now they're going to make us reveal our hand. They choose a non-creature, non-land card from it for us to discard. We don't have any of those. Nope. So we're going to play this land. Then we're going to go to combat. And we're going to attack for three in the air. Do we attack with everybody and just flip this over? That seems okay. Well, not everybody, but we can attack with this 4-4 four -four as well. And this one. Who the hell cares? They're, they're very low and we're still you're at 20. Right. And we get to flip this over and make more vampires with lifelink. Mm. For three mana, we make a vampire with lifelink. And we're got, we got nothing else going on, so. <laughs> <laughs> and this has vigilance. Well, we've got nothing else going on, so let's make a vampire, you know? <laughs> you know. Why not? Like uh, you do. All right, let's go to blockers. On a rainy day. <laughs> all right, so they're force blocking here. Oh, good. They're double blocking Oketra. 
That seems fun. Okay. Uh, we will kill Ariel first. Or at least try to. Go to first strike damage. They're making a token. That's fine. We go to first strike damage. Okay. Uh, and then we go to regular damage. Cool. So Oketra is the only thing that dies. We gained life. So we are going to put it into our library third from the top. Because why wouldn't we? That card's incredible. Uh, and then we end our turn because we can do this at instant speed and we will at any point during their turn. That resolves. You can see our mountain. Congrats. <laughs> They know we have a mountain. Ooh, they have Platinum Angel. Oh, shit. That's fine. We can still put them at zero, so that when, if and when the Platinum Angel dies, we win. Uh, pass to attackers. They don't attack. And we take our turn. We drew a Destroy Target Artifact card. Nice. <laughs> it's almost like Beautiful. that's why we put it in the deck. Okay, <laughs> let's go to combat. And let's attack with both of these. Because they're going to let... They might not let it through, and then we just hold this. Yeah, that's fine. Oh no, they let it through. We win. They let a Johnny's Pride Mate through. Yep, they're at negative two, which means that with their empty hand, we destroy target artifacts. Yay! Beautiful. <laughs> that was a good game. What a draw. That last draw was nuts for us. <laughs> oh, man. That's incredible. I'm, I'm a little sorry about that. <laughs> I'm not. All right, that game was pretty quick. You want to do one more? <laughs> yeah. So as we learned, it is best of one. Yeah. Also, I do know that I forgot to make that um, vampire, and that's just okay. <laughs> Mac Attack. It's a pretty great name. Uh, also, notice uh, we mulliganed that game. Yeah, we, we still did. won. All right, so three... We Beautiful. can play Resplendent Angel, because okay. that's three. Great. Uh, Conclave Tribunal, technically we can play, and we can play the Shield Breaker, but probably going to hold off. Okay. And we have a Finale of Glory, so we could make currently one 2-2 two -two Soldier, or we could wait on it. Sounds but, great. But the, the Angel is probably what we're going to play first, if possible. I love this battlefield. You do? Yeah. This is one of the Ravnica ones, so nice it makes sense. Clean. Yeah. Um, I tend to get very distracted and annoyed <laughs> when I have a <gasps> cluttered workspace. Fair. <laughs> so. so we could play this, but it's a 2-1. It's, it's reason for being in the deck is to destroy a troublesome artifact. Oh, you know, like a Platinum Angel or something. Nah. <laughs> All right, let's play this Resplendent Angel. They we don't love have our Platinum Angel. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a troublesome artifact. Do you, uh, did you notice what we drew, by the way? Oh, prison room. Okay. It's like, it's like when parents say that they love their, you know, terrible, terrible child. <laughs> um, they don't do anything wrong at all. Oh, crap. This is great. This is great. All right, so we're playing Legion's Landing first. We're making a creature. Then we're using Convoke and tapping our creature along with our lands. To steal their prison realm <laughs> until so we get our 3 3 back. And then next turn we get a 4 a 2 5 as well. Wait, so we stole a whole realm from them? <laughs> With a tribunal. The tribunal said that the realm wasn't allowed to exist. Oh. <laughs> That's what we've learned. So we didn't today. steal it. It's, no. it's not existent. I guess. The Birth of Melitus. Oh my god, what a great card. I love this card so much, everybody. I hope you've watched our draft so you can hear about how much I love this card. <laughs> that this card is better than that by a lot. All right, so we have four lands. We cannot play this because we don't have double red. But that's okay. This is the beginning of combat on your turn. Choose up to one target creature you control. It gets plus two plus zero and trample and vigilance if it's white. So we're gonna give the resplendent angel plus two plus zero and <laughs> vigilance. Do we attack with both? No, we do not. I'm so <laughs> So we hit them for five. Now this card says, at the beginning of our end step, if we gain five or more life this turn, we get a 4-4 angel, by the way, with flying vigilance. And then for six mana, until end of turn, this becomes a 5-5 five -five with life. I'm not even sure I'm following this anymore because there's so much going on. There is. But it's just, 
I know it's so good <laughs> that I'm I I don't mind okay. that I'm not following it. That's fair. Uh, okay, so we would want to kick this, and we're two away. Can we just play another four four flyer since they have no flying. This doesn't have reach, right? No. So choose one creature plus two plus zero. Oh. So we would want to give it to Aurelia to then give this a counter. So then we don't need... Oh, but... And it'll gain Trample if it's red, so yeah. She'll gain Trample and Vigilance. So yeah, let's go to Combat. Give it to herself. <laughs> then attack with both of these. In fact, let's attack with all three so we can flip Legion's Landing. Mentor onto the Angel. Legion's Landing flips. Amy, you following along? <laughs> There's uh, well, so much happening right now. Like I right said, now. lots of good things. <laughs> um, yeah. We gained a life. Wow. Mac attacks at six. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, I'm following that. Uh, do we... Do we just make another token? I think we just play Varix here. No need to get fancy. Unkicked. We just play it. We don't have the mana to kick it. Good lord, that's awesome. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Yeah, concession. Oh my god, this deck's awesome. <laughs> Victory. Oh my god. All right, well, oh my god, I'm so happy. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm... If only we could play this all the time. <laughs> we could actually win on the games. <laughs> we opened pretty well, and we did the correct thing and chose the right cards for our deck. Right, right. Right? Because, again, I was looking at the green, and I said how good our green was. But we didn't have a lot of mana ramp, and so, like, without a lot of mana ramp, it probably would not have been this good. Mm -hmm. Because this is very aggressive, which is what white and red want to be. Right. We haven't even drawn Riss yet. Yeah. And every card that we have, I feel like, makes a token of some kind. <laughs> yep. Right? Like, every card we've played, it's like, oh, by the way, it also makes a token or something. <laughs> like, it's just crazy. So, that is going to be the end of this particular episode. But, don't you worry, we're going to have more of this. Because, obviously, we have two wins, no losses. We either get three wins or three losses. Whichever we get first, we're done with this deck. But... I suspect we may end up playing this again if we have enough fun with it. So <laughs> definitely stay tuned. Thank you all so very much for watching. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it even half as much as we did. Because yeah. I don't know if you could tell, but we enjoyed this a little bit. <laughs> Thank you to the Arena team for giving us some Arena Cube sealed to keep ourselves occupied during this time of social isolation. Once again, genuinely from the bottom of our hearts, we hope that you are all staying safe and happy and healthy. That goes for you and your loved ones as well. And for now, from us here at the Geek for All family of channels, I have been Joe. And I'm Amy. Please feel free to check out our channel for more stuff to keep yourselves occupied. Share this stuff with your friends who might be bored as well and your families. We would really appreciate it. All that fun YouTube stuff helps us out a lot. You can share stuff. There's liking, commenting, subscribing, ring bells. You all know how YouTube works. It helps us out immensely. We are a small channel and ever, a little bit goes a very long way. So... As we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.